Darkness falls on the island of Morda. It's a sweltering July night, and a remarkable transformation is underway. A strange insect has crawled up from the ground, where it has spent many months feeding on plant roots. Now, settled at the top of a twig, the skin along its back splits open, and the insect hauls itself out of its old exoskeleton, exposing a soft and vulnerable body. It takes great care to pull out a new set of legs without damaging them. One last pull up, a little bit of wiggling, and its body is finally free. Now delicate wings must be unfurled by pumping body fluid through their veins. The finished product is this, a cicada. This is the most vulnerable point in its life. Soft-bodied and too weak to fly, it must hang here all night until it gains its strength. By the next morning, the cicada and hundreds of others like it are gone. There are some subtle clues as to their presence, however. The shed exoskeletons they left behind. Holes studded into plants by females laying their eggs. And incessant screaming. Cicadas are some of the most iconic elements of the Maltese summer, and though it may be incredibly difficult to spot them as they conceal themselves in the treetops, it's very easy indeed to hear them. The loud calls that echo throughout the islands in summer are produced by male cicadas. The song carries throughout the cicada's surroundings and acts as a mating call, a beckoning message to females, I am here, I am in good health, and I'd like to mate. The call is produced by a remarkable organ, a timble. It can be seen at work through small pits in the insect's abdomen. The structure is made of resilin, an extremely elastic and durable protein attached to powerful muscles. When the muscles contract, the resilin is squeezed like an accordion, and when the muscles relax, the resilin snaps back into place, releasing a loud pulse of noise. And to make sure the call is carried loud and clear, the abdomen of male cicadas is mostly hollow, making the perfect resonance chamber to amplify their song. All in all, it's quite hard for a female to ignore this message. Impressive though they are, cicadas aren't the only insects which sing in the Maltese Islands, and they certainly aren't the loudest. April. An unassuming northwest corner of Malta, where the sand has become riddled with strange holes. To see the culprits, we must wait for night to fall again. Just a few inches in front of me, right here, there is one of these curious holes in the sand, and soon you'll find out why I had to put on a pair of ear protectors. It's a sand cricket. Like the cicadas, these crickets are also males trying to attract females. 
but the way they produce their ear-splitting call is very different indeed. But just how do these relatively small creatures produce a song some 90 decibels loud? The secret to a male cricket's song is in its wings. The forewings of female crickets are quite normal looking, but take a look at the forewings of a male of the same species and you'll notice they're covered in bumps, ridges and smooth glassy areas. The structure of the male's forewings is crucial. Some ridges are positioned precisely to interact with others on the opposite wing. As the insect beats its wings rapidly, one wing repeatedly plucks at a row of teeth on the other, creating a sharp burst of high-pitched noise, which is in turn made louder by smooth areas on the wing, which act as resonators. Each rapid pulse blends into another to create a continuous song. If the males are successful, a female will be lured to their burrow, where they will finally mate. But whether or not the call of the sand crickets will remain the soundtrack of Malta's spring nights remains to be seen. Up until the early 20th century, this corner of the Maltese islands was a mosaic of agricultural fields, sandy coastline and natural scrubland. The agricultural community that lived here only ever needed narrow footpaths to conduct their business, and the burgeoning sand dunes lay vast and undisturbed. But soon enough, the world came knocking. By the 1960s, a growing population and the new wave of post-war tourism meant that the Adira area received more and more people. They were all seeking a day out at Malta's largest sandy beach, and soon, a coastal road cut straight through the area to cater for the traffic. A narrow road at first, followed by repeated widening and seemingly never-ending construction work which continues to this day. Eventually, what was once upon a time an extensive stretch of sand dunes had been replaced by four lanes of traffic. The wide and busy road cuts off the beach from the inland parts of the bay, preventing the recharge of sand and completely obliterating any chance that the dunes may ever return. At night, blinding street lamps disorientate nocturnal animals, and cars make short work of anything trying to make its way across. Today, sand crickets and other dune inhabitants have their work cut out for them trying to find somewhere to settle down. Only a handful of suitable habitats still exist in the Maltese Islands, and all of them are subject to the pressures of human beings. Poorly planned infrastructure, an overpopulated archipelago, and introduced predators such as cats and rats have left very little room for the natural world and it seems that spring nights may very well fall silent.